In this video, we're going to deal with another repeated eigenvalue problem when we determine the eigenvalues and associated eigenvectors uh, for this particular matrix. A reminder that the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org. Now, in the previous video, uh, video number 21, we dealt with this matrix and we saw it only had two different eigenvalues, 1 and 2. The eigenvalue of 1 was repeated twice. In that particular problem, the eigenvalue of 1 has two different eigenvectors associated with it. And of course, this has its eigenvector. All of these are linearly independent. So even though we had a repeated eigenvalue here for our 3x3 three three matrix, we still had three linearly independent eigenvectors. Now let's see what happens um, with this problem. Oh, and we should mention that we really are drawing heavily upon what we did in previous videos. In videos 4, 5, and 6, when we worked a lot with lead variables and free variables. In video number 14, where we dealt with the null space and determined that the dimension of the null space of a video equals the number of free variables once we have it in a uh, reduced row form. And then in videos 15 and 16, we started dealing with eigenvalue and eigenvector problems. And then in videos 19 and 20, we had a problem where we had to deal with uh, complex eigenvalues. Okay, for this problem here, this equals AX lambda X, then we have it so this determinant where we subtract lambda off the diagonals has to be equal to zero. And the reason for that is what we've been doing in the previous videos. Here's an eigenvalue eigenvector equation. We can multiply the eigenvector by the identity matrix and subtract it. So that the eigenvector, any eigenvector of matrix A will lie in the null space of this matrix. So for this matrix, in other words, for this matrix to have a non-trivial null space, it has to be singular or its determinant has to be zero. Well, now for our problem, matrix A is this. So subtracting lambda off the diagonals gives us this. And that determinant then has to be zero. And we can expand that out um, using minors and get an expression then for lambda and then we can actually solve for what lambda is and determine the uh, the relevant uh, eigenvalues. If we expand that out with minors, what we get is this expression, minus lambda cubed plus lambda squared plus 5 lambda plus 3 equals 0. And we can find the roots of that by using synthetic division. If you're not familiar with that process, if you go to the website and click on the calculus playlist, then once you're in that section, scroll down to where it says synthetic division, and you see we have lots of work problems there. For our problem here, use synthetic division, and we have minus lambda plus 1 squared times lambda minus 3 equals 0. So you can see we have another repeated eigenvalue problem. Multiply both sides of the equation by minus 1, we get rid of that. And we'll write this like this. So we have Lambda equals minus 1, Lambda equals minus 1, Lambda equals 3. 
So you have three eigenvalues, but only two different ones. So lambda 1, lambda 1, and lambda 2 is 3. Now, in our previous problem, when we had the repeated eigenvalue, we had two different eigenvectors associated with it. Will that happen again in this problem? So what we want to do is put in lambda equals minus 1 here on the diagonal and see what kind of expression we get. So we have then putting lambda equals not 1, lambda equals minus 1, sorry. Remember we had lambda plus 1 times lambda minus 3. That was squared with the minus sign here equals 0, so minus 1 is what's repeated, not plus 1. Okay. So 1 minus negative 1, that's 2. So you have 2, 1, 2, 2, negative 1 minus negative 1, that's 0, then 0, then 1, 1, 1 minus negative 1, that's 2. So this matrix that we have right here, that is our A minus lambda I matrix. And this times these are the components then of the corresponding eigenvector. And that equals 0. So for lambda equal minus 1, a minus lambda i is this matrix. Now, we have this occurring twice. Will we get two eigenvectors out of this? Well, that's the same as asking this question. The eigenvector is in the null space of this matrix. So if the null space has a dimension of 2, then there will be two linearly independent vectors in that null space. And those two linearly independent vectors in the null space would be eigenvectors for our matrix A. If this null space has a dimension of 2, then there's two linearly independent vectors in that null space. The two Linearly independent vectors in this null space are going to be two eigenvectors for this matrix. So let's go ahead then. If we take this to row reduction form, what we end up with this in the final step, we have this expression. 2, 0, 2, 0, minus 1, 1 half, 0, 0, 0, and write it as an augmented matrix. So we have this expression. And again, we skip these steps here because that's pretty straightforward. We've done that a lot in the previous videos. But what we want to look at now, of course, this is the x1 column. This is the x2 column. This is the x3 column. And we see that x1 is a lead variable. x2 is a lead variable. Leaving x3 as a free variable. So x1 and x2 are lead variables. x3 is a free variable. What does that tell us? The dimension of the null space equals the number of free variables. There's only one free variable here. That's x3. So there's only going to be one linearly independent vector in this null space, meaning that for lambda equal minus 1, there's only going to be one eigenvector 
associated with that. We're not going to have two eigenvectors as we did in our previous problem. So this is going to be entirely different now. And what will be that single eigenvector? Well, of course, we determine that by expressing the lead variables in terms of the free variable. So here we have minus x2 plus 1 half x3 equals 0. So x2 equals 1 half x3. So we express the free variable, the lead variable, in terms of the free variable. Then here we have 2x1 plus 2 times x3 equals 0. So x1 equals minus x3. Minus x2 plus 1 half x3 is 0. x3 equals 1 half x3. 2x1 plus 2 times x3 has to be 0. x1 equals minus x3. So our components here are expressed in terms of the free variable x1. That's minus x3. x2, that's 1 half x3. And then our third component, x3, that's a free variable, so it is just x3. Everything gets expressed in terms of the free variables. There's only one free variable. So here is our eigenvector. And we can factor out the x3. And we have minus 1, 1 half, and plus 1. x3 is the free variable. It can be anything. We can take it to be a simplest value, 1. So for lambda equal minus 1, there is a single eigenvector. And this is it right here, minus 1, 1 half, 1. But now for our problem then, for lambda equal minus 1, there is only one eigenvector associated with that. And again, we could determine that right away. And as soon as we got this and reduced row form and found out that there was only one free variable there. Now remember what we said in the last video. The number of times an eigenvalue is repeated is called its algebraic multiplicity. This is 2. The number of eigenvectors that are associated with this identical eigenvalue is called the geometric multiplicity. For this problem, it's only 1. So for this matrix, algebraic multiplicity of 2, geometric multiplicity is 1. Now what about when lambda equals 2? What kind of a situation do we have then? Lambda equals 3, actually. So, we don't need this space. So now we put lambda equals 3 here on the diagonal. We do that, and we have minus 2, minus 4, minus 2 on the diagonal. This times x1, x2, x3, that's the components of our corresponding eigenvector for our lambda number 2. And that equals 0. And again, that's just this equation for our particular problem. And we take this into row reduction. And for the rows now, we have this. Express it as an augmented matrix. We have this. And we look at it. And we see x1 is a lead variable. x2 is a lead variable. 
leaving x3 as the free variable. So the dimension of this null space is 1. There's only going to be one eigenvector in there. And again, we determine that eigenvector by expressing the lead variables in terms of the free variables. And then here, minus 3x2 plus 3 halves x3 is 0. That's going to turn out that x2 equals 1 half x3. So here we have minus 2x, where I'm going to the top row, plus 2 times x2. Well, that's just x3. So you have minus 2x1 plus x3 plus x3 equals 0. x1 equals x3. So we have the lead variables expressed in terms of the free variables. So our components are the eigenvector written in terms of the free variable, x1 and x2. We have x1 is x3, x2 is 1 half x3, and x3 is just x3. It turns out to be the free variable. Factor out the free variable, and we have this expression. So for lambda equal to 3, the corresponding eigenvector is 1, 1 half, 1. So notice for this matrix, this was repeated two times, but there is only one eigenvector associated with that. And then for our second eigenvector, Our second eigenvalue has a value of 3. Its corresponding eigenvector was this. So this matrix only has two eigenvectors. It has three columns. It's a 3 by 3 matrix, but only two eigenvectors. So this matrix is not going to be diagonalizable. Remember what we discussed in uh, videos uh, 17 and 18 when we did diagonalization and also in the previous video is that if we have a matrix A, a 2 by 2, it has two, if it has two eigenvectors with it, we use those to construct the model matrix, the components of these linearly independent eigenvectors. Then what we showed back in videos number 17 and 18 is that the, vid the matrix A times M is equal to this matrix times a diagonal times a diagonal matrix where the diagonal elements are just the eigenvalues. And again, that we went over in great detail in video 17 and 18. The point, though, is that if you have an n by n matrix, you've got to have an n number of linearly independent eigenvectors if it's going to be diagonalizable. In this case, we're just saying, OK, these are linearly independent. So this has an inverse. Multiply each side by the inverse. The matrix A is now in diagonalized form. But if we have three columns and only two eigenvectors, then we don't have enough eigenvectors to form our model matrix. This, then, is not diagonalizable. OK, that's it for this video. Um, again, this matrix is diagonalizable, even though it had repeated eigenvalues, because in that case, each eigenvalue of, of 1, this had two different, two linearly independent eigenvectors associated with it. That was not the case with the repeated eigenvalue with this matrix. OK, that's it for this video. Uh, come back and join us for some more videos, and we'll see if we can try to solve some more problems.